Wednesday to you all. Happy September the 14th. Um, God bless you all for joining us on this evening. We are honored to have you with us on this evening. We never take it lightly and we just want to welcome you um, to Bible study. In regards to announcements, if you have not signed up for our newsletter, please do so. Um, we are changing some of the functionality um, on the website so you will see where you can uh, subscribe to the newsletter. Um, you can also um, become a partner, join the ministry now if you hover over the connect um, tab on the website, all right? So we're, we're moving some things around and we're excited about everyone who's partnered with us. Um, in regards to, um, we are selling the anointing oil on the website, it's $5. And then there's a $2 um, shipping charge. Um, the ministry covers the, the, the rest of that. And you will receive a handkerchief with that as well that uh, Pastor Van and I have prayed over and um, you know, as we consecrate. Uh, let's see, uh, Fire and Glory is coming up. We are excited, excited, excited about it. I actually had a dream about um, one somebody coming in, um, coming into the event. So I'm very excited about that. We're excited about it. We're excited about what God is doing, and we cannot wait for you all to be a part of this. If you would like to be baptized during that time, when you register, you can let us know, or you can still reach out to us if you you know change your mind and decided to. You can hit the contact us, and you can be baptized when you come to the event. All right. And then um, if you would like to have dinner with Pastor V and I um, couples, you're more than welcome to let us know in regards to that as well. All right. And then Lofty Ground uh, is the nonprofit profit, excuse me, that works in conjunction with the ministry. You can go onto that website and you can find courses. We have partnered with Grow with Google, FDIC. And we are constantly working on um, new um, innovative things to do within Lofty Ground, all right? We have several um, programs that are going on, so we are continuously building Lofty Ground up. But you can check out that resource library. It's free, F-R-E-E, -E, free, okay? So no charge. Um, if you know someone who needs it, please let them know about it. All right, and I think that is it, sweetheart. Is that it? I believe that's it for now. All right, all right. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> I'll all just right. say that. I can't say any more right now. <laughs> right. Just stay tuned. <laughs> well, good evening. How's everyone? <laughs> For everyone had had an outstanding <laughs> weekend and is experiencing God's very, very best throughout mm -hmm. this week. We decree over you guys lives nothing but the best and the, the, that the word has to offer, which is God's anointing, God's healing, his saving, his deliverance power over your life, that whatever you guys are going through, we decree and we actually, first and foremost, we agree with you in prayer that God's doing a work in your life and the best is yet to come in your lives. Amen. Amen. You just got to stay connected to the thing, to the word of God. Stay connected to God. Amen. 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 We got to stay connected. He's our source. Amen. And I thank God for that. Well, we're going to get right into it. I see you guys look so excited and so eager to get the word on tonight. So we're just going to jump right on in. And I'm going to pray. We're going to get right into the to the to the nice lesson. Amen. First of all, before I do that, if you guys are enjoying the, the, the word, well, a couple of things. Let's back up. We want <laughs> We listen, we here at the TCAM family, the, the Kingdom Advancing Ministries, we are moving. Tell your neighbor, M-O-V-I-N-G. We're moving, y'all. <laughs> so you'll be you'll be able to see us on this platform, but then you'll be able to see us in person too. Yes. So stay tuned. We got this <laughs> is something we cut is coming. So if you're in the DMV area, you gotta come see it. Because we're we we're, 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 we 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 great we great take flight y'all. Well, we already took flight. I'm talking yeah, absolutely. And we, so, we're out. We out of here. Absolutely. So <laughs> we we'll be we, we'll probably be still, still doing out. virtual Bible study, but we'll oh, definitely be in a facility. And so, listen, come and see us. Come worship with us. And if you guys are experiencing the very very best that God has for you, and you and, and listen, and this ministry is being a blessing to you in any way. 
share it, tell somebody about it. Mm-hmm. And we haven't forgotten our, about our partners that join us every week on Bible yeah, yeah, yeah. study. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we will not forget you. We absolutely. are still connected and you all will be. You guys get preferential treatment. Yes, you do. You really do. And so Bible studies will still be, you know, absolutely. here. Um, but we we have more. I'm telling you, you better sign up for that newsletter. Yeah. But we'll make announcements here absolutely. too. And the reason yeah. why I say that to you guys for all those who are faithfully sowing into this ministry with your mm-hmm. gifts of love, listen, you guys are helping make this happen. Mm-hmm. And so I want I I like to tell you guys that because people yeah. like to see where their giving is going. I know. And we and, and listen, we're not we're not hiding anything. We want to share we want to share with you where your resources are going. And so you guys are helping us make this happen, helping pushing the kingdom forward, which is what we do here at the Kingdom Advancing Ministries. We are kingdom advancers. We advance the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of Virgil and Tanya Lofty. We don't have it's no no no. But some okay. people, some people build kingdoms for themselves. We but we but we push the kingdom of God here. Not our will, but his will be done. And so hey listen, don't don't get worried. Keep sowing, keep serving and watch the things of God happen. Listen, we promise that, that the word promises that he will never forget your labor of love and everything that you sow, he's going to pull back into you guys. That's the word. Um, I do want to say in regard, were you done with that first one? Go I'm ahead. adding to what you're Go saying. Ahead. Go ahead. Um, and just don't forget, a lot of you all were part of the unlocking the mysteries in October. I mean, October, Lord, I'm sorry, wrong event. But in January and you know you all heard the word of the Lord concerning this ministry all right and it's been said over and over again it was the Lord had me to share again um in May um during our communion service so the word of the Lord concerning this ministry is just that all right it's not changing because we're not changing because we always want to see God's face and his hand move in this ministry and in the lives of the partners and so that's why we want to always share and that's why pastor v continuously shares that so that you know that listen where you plant your seed and where you spend your time you know it matters amen Mm -hmm. it matters it matters where you're being fed and so um we just wanted to share that because we've heard many testimonies come from you know, unlocking the mysteries and the it's so many that are still coming forth. Amen. I, we haven't shared all of them um, recently, but there's a lot more. And, um, you know, I don't know if you have a ministry. I'm not, <laughs> we can only talk about the fruit that we see from here. Amen. Amen. And so that this is the ground that the Lord has given us to till. Oh, well, we, we going to take the whole earth that part, but you know, nevertheless, so just so you know, just if you would like to stay connected, if the Bible studies, we pray that even if you're not a partner, that you come and if you hear the word of God, that it changes your life. Amen. And that the that the word will take root in your heart yeah. so that you can change to be all that God has created you to be. Amen. 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 Well, good, 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 good. Mm-hmm. Well, Billy Jean, welcome. Yes. I wanted to officially... She is. She officially joined up with us and partnered with us in ministry. So you guys know I do my Ray Charles hug. Thank you. We appreciate you. We love you so very, very much. Thank you guys. For all of you, if we have not acknowledged you guys, all, all those who have partnered with us, if we did not acknowledge you openly, listen, charge it to my head, never to my heart. I, I Listen, we love you guys. My Ray Charles hug to you, Zach, all of you guys. Thank you. Alana. You. Alana, all of you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the list goes on and on. Yep. And so we, we pray love you all. We pray that God will continue to bless you and that we continue to pray. We pray that we continue to be the, the leaders that God has called us to be Amen. that will usher you into the presence of God. Hallelujah. That we will give you the word concerning the word of God that you mm-hmm. can live out a victorious Hallelujah. life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. So we know that you're going to continue to grow, 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 girl. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so let me pray and then we'll get right into tonight's lesson. Well, Father, I thank you, praise you, Father, for this is the day that you have made, God. Hallelujah, God. We are rejoiceful. We will be glad in the God. Thank you for this time. 
hallelujah, to fellowship together, Father, doing this Bible study, God. Thank you for, hallelujah, your spirit and your presence being in our midst on tonight, God. You said we're two or three gathered together in your name, Father, there you are in the midst of God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in our midst on tonight. Have your way as only you can. Heal, deliver, set free miracles, signs and wonders. It's never a bad day for miracles. Hallelujah. So we thank you that the best gifts of the spirit will be in full operation. Show up like you always do, God, to do what you do best. And that's turn things that seem impossible to possible, God. Oh, God, Father, for it may be impossible with us, but all things are possible through you, God. So we thank you, Father, that we put on and take off our impossible, and yes. we put on your on the things that become possible for you, God. So we cast away everything that's impossible for us, God. Ah, oh, God, that will make, hallelujah, this ground fertile, Father, for you to show up, God, to do what you do, God. Oh, God, and I thank you, God, and we I feel your presence on tonight, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Be pleased with us on tonight. Oh, God, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, the presence of the Lord is here, y'all. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The presence of God is here. And I thank God for it. Y'all may be like, what you doing, Pastor Lee? Hey, listen, I'm giving God space and opportunity that if he's saying anything that he said, if he want to do anything that he can do it through me. Praise, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you are a willing vessel, we pray that he can do it through you. So if God is ministering and speaking to you, hallelujah, just let us know. Put something in the chat that you got something. And listen, we'll, 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 we'll release what God wants to release. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. On tonight, on tonight, on tonight. God, I thank you. On tonight, I thank you, God, because we want to talk about a kingdom advancer caring for the lost. Amen. A kingdom advancer caring for the lost. Because in this season of our lives, everyone, men and women, ladies and gentlemen, we're finding that there is, that we need to have a care for the lost like never before. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this world is dying mm -hmm. and man, people are leaving here at a rapid pace. We don't know if they know Jesus. We don't know if they know Jesus, but we know they're leaving here. And as many as we can confirm that know Jesus, we know that, re that we can, we will rejoice again as with them again at some point. Amen. And so let's talk about that one. Turn your Bibles to uh, Matthew, 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 chapter nine. Mm -hmm. And we and we know in Matthew chapter nine, Jesus was going about. He healed, you know, he was healing. He was doing miracles. He was going from city to city, from village to village, place to place, healing, doing what God has called him to do. Healing, he healed the paralyzed man. He was just, he was the Spirit of God. He was moving. God, Jesus was moving, healing. He healed blind. He healed the blind eyes. Man, listen, we, all testimonies of God's healing power. But I want to jump down to even further in verse thirty-five. But we're gonna pick it up right there. It says Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of this of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom which is what we do in the kingdom advances. We announce the good news of God's kingdom. We advance his agenda, moving his kingdom forward. And it says, and he healed every kind of disease and illness. Amen. So I decree on the night, whatever you're going through, whatever challenges in your health and in your body that's facing you, we decree that God's healing power, Jesus, he's moving in your situation. Right now, healing whatever's concerning you. Let's lift your hands and say, God, thank you for healing. Amen. Whatever's going on in my body, God, thank you, Father, for healing. Hallelujah. That I'm the healed and I'm the whole in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, because it's, we got to get a hold. We got to catch him when he's moving through. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all better receive that on tonight. And if it's not for you, 
decree it for somebody that you know, that you love, that has a health challenge and that's battled. Say, God, thank you for healing whoever. Call them by name. Amen. Amen. And it says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion. How many of us believers have compassion for the lost, for people who need to know Jesus Christ? On them because they were confused and helpless. See, the, the good, the one thing about those who who need who, who don't know Jesus and need Jesus, they're confused and helpless. They like to make us believe that they got the all things worked out, but they're confused and helpless. They are what, what they are what we call clueless. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. They're clueless about what lies ahead for them. And if we are truly can if we are truly caring and compassionate about the lost, we know already what lies ahead for those who don't receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I know this may not be the Amen crowd tonight, but y'all better come on and get with something going on because listen, huh? No, go ahead. I'm gonna keep reading. No, I was saying Matthew 35 through, through 38. Keep going. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. And I'm so yeah, I got it. Okay. And so we got to get compassionate about that mm -hmm. because we should always be concerned about the things that concern God. Amen. And if we aren't concerned about what concerns God, we need to question whether we're on the Lord's side or not. Mm. Amen. Amen. See, this is our home moment for all of us. Mm -hmm. Not just me because I'm ministering the gospel. Because listen, Paul tells me that if, if I minister if I minister the gospel and it does not have an effect on me, then the word that I'm preaching, I should be a castaway of the very word that I teach. Amen. So I understand the importance of making sure that we minister the laws to the laws. And listen, it's not always what we say a lot of times, it's sometimes in how we live our lives on our job. Are we the worst people to encounter on our job? When people see us, do they run not because we are Christians, but do they run because we nasty? Do they run away from us because when we tell people, when we, when we, when we, when we give them the side eye when they cuss, why do they look at us when we cuss? Be a difference. Amen. <laughs> we need it to be a difference. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. It says, when, they, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. They were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. That's why, listen, that's why we all, we, we need pastors. We need people to minister the gospel to us. We need people to help us. Because sometimes we get off track. Mm -hmm. And let's keep going. And it says, he said to his disciples, the harvest is great. I'm saying to you, ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You're all the ministers. If you proclaim the, the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. listen, I have news for you. You are a minister. You don't have to have the MIN in front of your name. You've been declared a minister. You don't have to have no plaques hanging on the wall. That's just, that's just, that's window dressing. That don't determine what you're, what you, what you've been called to do. God already called you to minister. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. There's many souls out there, but how many people willing to do the work? How many willing to get their hands dirty? How many remember when I was a, when you were a sinner in need of a savior? Oh, man, that's good stuff right there. Mm -hmm. We have... And I'll say this, we as we as people, we have a proclivity to look down on people once we receive certain level or we become we get to a certain level of whatever that may be for us, wealth, influence, prestige, whatever, whatever that thing is. Titles. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. <laughs> Titles. Whatever that thing is. Uh -huh. We have a tendency that once we attain certain things, we tend to look at people who have not achieved what we thought, what we believe, which we look at them different. Mm -hmm. 
But here's the good, here's the news, good or bad, however you look at it. Whether you, whether you have a title, degree, prestige, we, if you don't know Jesus, you still need to know him. Yeah. And somebody has to minister that Jesus to them. Amen. Is that you? You have to take him on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to walk around knowing what's, what lay up with lies on the inside of you. We talked about it last week, that you guys have these treasures hidden. In, we have these treasures hidden in earthen vessels. Mm -hmm. We carry the power of Jesus Christ on the inside of us. We have the greatest treasure this world will ever know. And we're not willing to share. Wow. How stingy can we be? Yeah. When the gospel was so freely given to us, we walk past people every day who at some point, whether it's a second, a minute, an hour, a day, two days, may die in their sin. Mm -hmm. And we didn't say a word. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, listen, this is not a condemnation message for anybody. Mm -hmm. This is a message to let us know, listen, people and children of God, this world is falling and dying, and, and listen, it's going to be over sooner than we think. Mm -hmm. And here's even the kicker. How many of your family members don't know you know Jesus? Wow. For those who are watching, those who are listening, those who may be coming back in and replanting, if your family don't know you serve Jesus, either you are ashamed or you won't proclaim. We need to figure out where we are. It helps us locate ourselves. So this is a message for all of us to help us locate ourselves. Are we ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? I know I'm not. Because the Bible says, for it is the what? The power unto God. Mm -hmm. Unto salvation. Yep. Oh, man, listen, we <laughs> need to get busy about the things of God. <laughs> Find that screen. Which one, baby? You're not helping me. I just said, I just told you what it was. The shame that the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's so important for us that we make sure that we are doing the work of God. Let me continue. Did I finish it out? It says, so we pray that the Lord who is in charge of the harvest asks him to send more workers into the field. One translation says that we therefore earnestly to, um, to the Lord of the harvest to send our laborers into the harvest. Go ahead, read that. Okay, it's Romans 1 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, Amen. to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. So that's to those who will believe. Amen. That's to those who will believe. You have to, you have to say that because everybody's not going to believe and we have to really be okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, so listen, as, as children of God, mm -hmm. our, that's our, that's, that's what we should be moving towards. Mm -hmm. Romans 1 16, for I am not ashamed. Are, are we ashamed of this gospel? Wow. Because listen, we know it's not popular. <laughs> we know people play with it. All the time. But it's not the most popular thing. Why? Because when you serve Jesus Christ, it costs Come on here. It's going to cost you friends. Or let me not say that because if they were your friend, they'd still be your friend. People that you know, associate yourselves with. Mm -hmm. Because we throw friend. I, I, I hate using the word friend. Mm -hmm. I will let me not say hate. I dislike using the word friend because people throw that word friend around so loosely. Yeah. People don't know what it is to be friends. Mm -hmm. Amen, babe. Amen. Just because I don't like what you say don't mean we stop being friends. Mm -hmm. If we were friends to begin with. <laughs> but see, that's that's the that's the caveat in it. It's only convenient relationships 
-hmm. not covenant relationships. That's it right there. And so are we ashamed of Jesus Christ? Why? Because of what somebody may say. Man, you too radical. You don't have to be that way. No, but you want to be the way you want to be. But then when I be, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm the way I need to be for Christ, you have a problem with that. Does that speak more about me or more about you? See, this one boldness about who and right, about who right, you serve right. is going to have to take in, especially when it comes to ministering and caring for the laws. Because people, the very people that you that you that you travel in your circle with who do not know Jesus, the minute the minute you start talking about Jesus, you changed up. Of course I did. You're supposed to change. You didn't. I'm, I'm I'm mad you didn't change. You're supposed to change. Absolutely. You better change. You you. What fellowship has light with darkness? Amen. What fellowship? What fellowship? Yeah. And then if, if 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 it was no change, then why would there why would there be a need for the renewing of the mind? Amen. Amen. We just teaching and talking on tonight. Y'all with us, y'all? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Let me know we are we all right. Everybody cool? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't say amen, say ouch, at least. <laughs> yeah. And we have to understand the difference between witnessing and trying to save somebody. Yeah, we haven't been called to save nobody. No, you can't save them. Jesus saved. Your job is to witness and to be a witness by the life that you live. Amen. You can't save them. Some people do not want to be saved. And the moment you realize that and you want to know how you will know, you will know them by the fruit that they bear. Amen. And so it's not, we're talking about being a witness, being a witness unto Judea to the uttermost parts of the world, mm -hmm. because the gospel is going to be heard by everyone yeah. before his return. No one will be able to say that they didn't have a chance to accept Christ. And so we want you to know that you have already in you what it is to be able to minister the gospel to someone else. Amen. Your testimony alone should be enough. Yeah, yeah. And for some, because you're not living the way you should, that's why you don't say anything. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for you to say anything because you're like, man, I just went out there and smoked a cigarette with them. And so now I'm going to try to witness to them. You see, you see where, the, where that's an oxymoron? Because why are they going to listen to you? So I, I, so somebody asked me the other day, um, well, not the other day, that's a lot, a couple of, maybe a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks ago. What, what, how do you feel about smoking? Because it don't say it in the, I said, well, listen, if God wanted you to smoke, why didn't he put a chimney in your head? <laughs> I said, but, I said, but see, I said, but see, this is the conversations that people want to have because these conversations are, are, are meant to distract. Yeah. I tell people all the time, I listen, you if you smoke or you drink, that has to be a choice you make. But why wouldn't you want to present God a pure vessel? And why wouldn't you want to preserve your life? Why would why wouldn't you want to preserve your life? Well, because it's I'm, no go ahead, man. Go ahead. No, I'm listening. No, it, it just it doesn't make any sense. No. It doesn't make any sense. But see, these are the kind of arguments people will draw you in, especially when you're ministering to them. They will want, they will try to, they want, they would, it's, it's designed to do anything to get you from talking about what matters. And that's Jesus Christ coming into your life and changing your life. That the Bible says that, listen, let, go ahead. No, I just, people, the, the power to, the, Deliverance is still available. And I think because you have the power to walk away from things, it's whether you choose to that, or not. That's why Romans tells us that right. the gospel for is, is the power. It's the power of God. It helps the it helps the power of God frees you, delivers Purifies you, purifies you, cleanses you Come from on. all dead works. works. And I don't want to smoke a cigarette and die. I don't want cancer. And anything, I don't want 
that you was know, my point. And yeah. anything, and anything that's not producing life Produce is causing death. death. That's it. But then when your kidneys and your liver and your lungs are all eaten up, then it's an issue. So why would God it's tell you to choose life? Yeah, we have to choose life. And you accept things that cause death. death. Amen. And then you're going to be this. See, you don't want, I'm not going in so, there right now. Come so, on, free, care, free. so caring for the loss, <laughs> caring for the loss speaks to the entire man. Yes, hallelujah. It speaks from every aspect of our lives. So when we are concerned about the loss, we care for their entire body. That's, yes. that's spirit, soul, and Amen. body. Amen. We care about the entire man, and that means woman, mankind is what I'm, I'm so I'm, we're concerned about that as yes. children of God. Yes, absolutely. We should be. Why? Because it concerns God. As I told you, if it don't move you, or if you're not concerned about the things that move God and they don't move you, then what we need to we need to do some more drilling. We need to do some more digging mm -hmm. to figure out. Okay, we need to uproot you from the soil that you in and place you in this soil of the kingdom, mm. the kingdom of God. Because over here, the kingdom of God produces life. Amen. Amen. And if we walk around and we see people walking around, that that's why. Listen, that's why that those those shows, The Walking Dead, and those things are so popular because it is it is, it is, it is a direct depiction of what we see walking every around day. every day. And these people are walking around, not probably with body parts and limbs falling off, but they are dying. Amen. There's, some, there's something on the inside, that spirit on the inside is dying. Okay. And it's eroding from the inside and it, it translates and it comes out of them. Mm -hmm. Good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we see it. Mm-hmm. We see it, mm -hmm. and our hearts should be listen. Whether it's whatever, whatever, whatever God speaks to you, we I pray and we pray that God will give you ears to hear, mm -hmm. a heart of clay to identify moments when the ministry is available for you, mm -hmm. because He that wins souls is wise. We have to be wise in how we approach every situation in terms of winning souls. We can't just walk up to one and just start bad, just slamming the word. We can. The first of all, Holy Spirit is a loving, compassionate. Mm -hmm. the, the Holy Spirit is compassionate, is loving. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's, it's strong and it's forceful, but it doesn't force him, it doesn't force itself on anyone. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit is a gentle, meek spirit in terms of the fact that you got to want to receive. Yeah, yeah, you have to. You can't force the Holy Spirit on anyone. Nope. You got the Holy Spirit is so loving and so welcome that if you open your mind, your heart, and your arms to receive and your spirit is willing, the Holy Spirit will come on in. Mm -hmm. It's the same with ministering. When you minister, you got to minister in such a way. And when you step up to somebody to minister into such a way, they have to, you got to minister in a way where it's received. Amen. Now, listen, what they do with the information, you can't be concerned about. Yep. That's what you shake it. Let me put that. I got to put that in there. I got to put that. I got to put that disclaimer in there Wisdom. for each and every one of you. That if they do not receive, it is not your problem. Yep. And that's what discourages so many people to minister because people expect people to change like that. For some, it's, for some, it's just that, that easy. Mm -hmm. Receiving is just that easy. The acceptance that they that God has come. Why? Because what? Because listen, when we show up on the scene and it's that easy, God has already been ministering to them. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're adding confirmation to what God has already been placing in and in, in the tug of war and their spirit has been. So now it becomes easy. Okay, God, I hear you. I surrender. How many of us was like that? <laughs> our lives, <laughs> our lives was a tug of war. Until what when we when we finally surrendered and said, God, I surrender. I, and someone came along and said exactly what God was ministering and sharing with you all along. Oh man, come on, man. This is a good message because. Why is this a good message? Because it's teaching me about me and teaching me how to deal with other people who may not re who who may not respond like I did, but in need to respond. Mm -hmm. 
We've been, we've been plowing on this for a couple of weeks. One planter, one water, God gets the increase. And this is so important that we talk about this because I can't stress it enough. I see it every day on my job and my eyes are wide open. So I know if your eyes are wide open on your job, you see it, if you see it, if you're traveling on public transportation, however you move around this life, you see it. And I, go ahead, I had a young, I was, I was in the mall with my sons mm -hmm. and I had a young lady, a young lady of all people stepped to me like she wanted to fight y'all. She was so aggressive. What you looking at? What you say? And I'm like, what? huh? Whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, I don't argue with women. That's first of all. Two, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna meet your aggression with my aggression. Three, if I do anything in this mall outside of the will of God, my whole witness is shot. And listen. I wasn't past the V at this, well, I was always past the V. I just wasn't publicly known as past the V. But I was still Minister Virgil. And the moment, <laughs> the moment I got outside of who I was really, who I was, could have changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. Two things could have happened and two things could be true. She could have killed me or I could have killed her. Because I don't take nothing for granted nowadays. The enemy will use anybody or anything to do anything. There's some, and I said that to say not, not, a, not a bash about the women, but they, women and men are both, they're equally aggressive. And so I just said to the young lady, I said, you must be having a bad day. I pray for you. I pray that God will help you. She looked at me, but this is when we have to, we have to minister compassion and love with people because we don't know what people are going through out here. The enemy is using and talking to people like never before. People are committing suicide at an alarming rate. People are taking other people's lives because they're coveting other people's things. And we don't talk about coveting so much. Why do you think Facebook and these things are so popular? Because people covet what other people had. Yeah. Instead of just being happy and content with the life God has blessed you with. And listen, rejoicing with others as they rejoice. They take on a coveting spirit. And that's why we have to minister to people in so much love and the wisdom of God. We have to know what, what, what rooms to walk in, what rooms not to walk in, what conversations to engage in, what conversations not to engage in. Discipleship is more than just finding somebody on the street and, minister, and, and, and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. But after you've done that, now we have to move a step forward. And, and, and for some, making sure to see some of them, we have to get them across the finish line. Because now you need to know what role or what part you play in their salvational track. Some may be just responsible for watering. Some may, some may be responsible for just planting the seed. The ultimate goal is to get to select, is to get in the gospel. God, so God gets the increase on their lives. You can clean them up. Absolutely. You can't clean them up. God's got to clean them up. And, and, and bring them and bring them to the house of the Lord. We can share the we can minister the word to them the word. on a consistent basis where they will grow, get their roots planted in some in some fertile soil, and then grow and then go out. And after they after they've gotten strong, now they go out and share what they what they've learned from other to others about the word of God. Amen. Good, you have some. No, turn your Bibles to Luke nineteen. Luke 19. Amen. And, and one thing I do want to share is make sure that you're rooted. I mean, you know, like 
sure yourself up. I'm not saying you know what I'm not saying you can't minister to anybody at any point. That's not what I'm saying. But if I'm trying to minister and you know, let's just say, I don't know, you know, you have that friend who's whatever, I don't even know. Okay, but there's something and you know you walked out of that. You don't have to go back into that same place or do the same do you don't have to be in the place that they are to minister to them you because said you said something really important right there you said be rooted mm -hmm. but let me answer that when you in this in this area be rooted caring for the lost you got to be rooted and grounded in god's right, love right the love of god you got to be rooted and grounded in god's love because to see the lost the way god sees them you got to have the love of god right and I know for me, you know, I had to walk away from some, you know, Absolutely. I had to walk away from some friend, for some friendship, some things, and some, some, people. some people, some places and some things. Yes, indeed. And because you know that it's not, uh, it didn't have, it didn't bear any fruit. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is when my life, if my life is now, if my life could, if I could show you anything, I would show you that. I want to show you that. For, for God, I live and for God, I die. I'm going to follow Christ. I want to follow him. I want to follow his ways. So that means I can't go out to the club anymore or I can't. These are things that you're going to have to, your appetite. Listen, your appetite has to change Amen. because if the change, how are you going to minister? If God's not real to you, how is God going to be real to somebody else? Amen. If he's not evident in your life, why would I follow you? And see, this is what Paul was talking. About. They were like, is this the same one who persecuted the Christians? But Paul was, Paul, something changed for him. Do you all understand? Something has to change in your life. Something, I should see a difference. I remember years ago, they used to sing a song, a wonderful change has come over me. And you can't sing a song or even understand that if you have not had a change take place in your life where the things you used to do, you don't even want to do them anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I just feel God's love because you got to not want to do those things anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, but that's, a, but those are key points because when you, and th this is, when you when you get something new that you've been expecting, okay. you want to share with everybody. You want everybody to see my brand new car. You get you got that ring. You want you quick to show it off. You even take pictures of it. You post it. You do whatever. When you when when there's an experience or or there's an, there's something that you've experienced in your life that caused a shift in how you see things and how you view things. Now your heart is joyful. You want to share every you want to share every aspect of your birthdays. Y'all put we post they post birthdays on it, my 40th, my 35th, whatever your whatever your celebration may be, you post it. Why? Because you are so excited about that time in your life. The same with Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh. And I just hear God saying, if somebody scrolled your timeline, could they tell that you served Absolutely. me? Absolutely. Could if they, somebody scrolled your timeline, could they tell that you served me? Yeah, how about that? Uh oh, got quiet. I mean, because we're quick to, where is the light? I'm not saying you can't post about whatever, something happened nice to you, great to you, but where is your witness? Amen. When are you going to be the salt of the earth? Salt has flavor. Salt preserves. When are you going to be able to show somebody that God's preserving you? Amen. You almost said absolutely they could. When is somebody going to be able to say, wait a minute, they walked out of that life. I knew, because you know they already know who you were and are, that part. Mm -hmm. They know when you got the Jesus saves on your screensaver, but you ain't living nothing. And that's why many have don't even want to, they don't want to, when do we see the change is what I'm, I'm, we're trying to relay. So that that change that happened in you, you can say, 
hey, God did this for me. Hey, God loves you. You witnessing to somebody is not giving them 50 scriptures. It's, hey, do you know Jesus? Do you know he loves you? And if we could all just take, you know God is telling you to minister to somebody. You know God is, I, okay, I'm going to talk about me. God has told me to tell some, and see, but we want, we want, we want something grandiose. I don't, I don't know what that is, but God may just say, tell them I love them. Smile at them, wave. It's the love of God that will draw a person. Mm -hmm. It's the love of God. It's the love that draws men unto him. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we have to know when, come on, you got a witness and don't blow your witness. And if you blew your witness, you better go back, say, listen, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have had it. You know what? The Lord, because like Pastor V said, condemnation is not the same as conviction. But yes, you should have conviction. Holy Spirit should convict you. He will convict you. Now, if you grieve him, that's on you. But don't act like God didn't, God didn't talk to you about that. Maybe you just weren't listening. Maybe your heart is hard. And maybe you're in a situation where you are still smoking with somebody and the Lord, man, I need, look, I need to get my life together. <laughs> I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. Because you have to be able to locate where you are. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And we want to, we, we don't want to cause anybody else to stumble. Oh, my Lord. By our life choice. If we proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord, say, we don't want our life to mirror the world where we cause anybody to fall and to stumble. That's good, baby. Because how many people have you looked up to within the church or, you know, men, uh, men people, and then they, they mess up and don't, but, it, it, it can. Yeah, again, I got, this is not a message of perfection at all. Oh, no, 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 no. We're no. not telling people you got to, we, we, I am saying that we you have to live a life holy. of holiness. Yeah, you I am not, I'm not telling nobody not to, the Bible says, be ye holy, for I am holy. I am holy. That means God saying he's holy, so he's calling us who serve him to be holy. What I'm saying to everybody is, I'm not saying that you have to be perfect, mm -hmm. because I, 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 know for, I know most goodness well that we are in our flesh mm -hmm. bodies. And Paul was saying that in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. I get that, but we are to buffer this flesh. We ought to, we, we should be dying daily to the things and the cares of this world because we serve a holy God and we accept to be a holy people. So we should be dying to that stuff. But what I'm saying to you guys is, I, this, this is not a call to perfection. This is a call of not living a active life of sin. Amen. Is what this, what, what we're talking about concerning what what about so you can witness. about the witnessing aspect mm -hmm. so your your life doesn't cause anyone else to, to slump and to fall mm -hmm. and to be like i ain't nothing to that ain't nothing to that 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 salvation that christianity stuff man yeah. that that dude lived just as bad as i do i saw him in the nightclub the other night but yeah. that's what i was saying that's what we were saying yeah babe. yes that's, for sure that's what would make you there should be a difference it would make you it's like so that's what people know. Come on, y'all. Y'all know when something's real. People know. People know. We're not ignorant. We're not dumb, right? So come on. And you want to be, I want to be the change that I want to see. Amen. And so I want to show somebody, yes, you can come out. Yes, you can. It better, a life in Christ, doing it God's way is possible. Yeah. I, I, I always tell you guys, I don't, I don't know you guys personally to the point mm -hmm. where I don't want to know about your personal business and stuff like that. I talk about my life because I know what I did. Come on. I know what I've that been delivered from. Lord, I know what God brought me out of. I know the life that I live. Come on, y'all, y'all know. I, I know that I was a sinner. I know I participated willingly in sin until Jesus came and 
and, and rescued my life, mm. called me out of darkness and placed me into his marvelous light. I, I know what I was. And so, and when I first got saved, I had scriptures to remind, I, I kept scriptures to remind me not to go back. Amen. Amen. And, the, and one of the ones I, 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 I kept so, so vividly was 2 Corinthians 6, 17, when it told me, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. Mm -hmm. That once he made me clean, he saved me and I was baptized. What listen, we all we all we, we always heard the song. He said, you know, we were always you people say, when I went down in the water, I went down, <laughs> I, my, I came up, my hands was clean, my feet were clean. No, it's you saying it wrong. I, I'm saying it, but I don't know. My hands looked new and my feet did too. Oh, so. well, now my hands were dirty, <laughs> but now they clean. I get okay. Listen, we went Ooh. down dirty and came up clean in the Amen. sight of God. And I knew that I couldn't go back. I couldn't take what I, what this clean thing, because I was still virgin, but I couldn't take this new clean spirit that I had on the inside of me mm. into the dirty places that I once that I once lived in. I once spent all my time in. I knew. Why did you know, Pastor V? Because when I walked in certain places, I didn't feel the same. I, and listen, the things that I couldn't see, I started seeing. My eyes became open to the to what was around me. Mm -hmm. I started. I don't want to freak nobody out because I started huh. seeing. I started seeing spirits. I was about to that, say you better go ahead in. That was that was that I knew was meant to kill. Yeah, that's what they're designed to do. To steal. The enemy only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And to destroy my life. Yes, Lord. And so I knew that I couldn't take this new vessel into the old, same dirty places. Cause some of them see in spirits now. Yeah, and so when so when we talk about ministering, we talk about making sure that what when we talk ministering and, and presenting mm -hmm. our God to people, we mm -hmm. have to make sure that we do it from a place that we love God. We know that God has transformed our lives. Mm -hmm. So now, God, I in, in response to what you've done for me, God, I give back to you what you've given to me. It's my responsibility to share with others. What Witness. you've done, how you did it, how you made a way when there was no way. I was dying in sin yes, Lord. and you rescued me. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Listen, y'all better come on, man, because this, if God did anything for you, mm. you ought to be able to say hallelujah to what. And some of you don't want to share the dirty parts, but that's the part that God came in and cleaned up. Amen. That's the part that you, listen, I know what you thought you knew of me, knew of me, but I'm telling you something happened to me. Look, I don't have it all worked out yet, but God knows I'm moving towards and I'm going to press to the more the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing that. Listen, you have to press toward the mark. That means you have to keep working towards doing right. Amen. You have to keep working towards it. And so you can say, listen, if you want to come on in this journey with me, I invite you to Bible study or whatever it may be but listen all i can give you is what i know god gave me and i'm telling you that he's real and some of you you have enough in you but you're not sharing the testimony of his goodness that's what a witness is a witness is somebody that comes in when they take when they ask call for witnesses in the courtroom right they're calling for people who know about the truth or know about that situation you know what God has done for you. Amen. And that's got to be, a, that. it doesn't, you don't have to bust. You don't have to be a scholar. But something looks different about you, Billy Jean. Something looks different about you, Alana. So, and, when, and then some of y'all, look, some people, how many of y'all tell the truth right now? I want you to tell the truth. I want you to tell the truth, all right? You know somebody done walked up to you and said, something different about you today. What? what? Is, it, is it your hair? Did you look? You look different. Tell the truth. I don't see not one. I see one hand. Y'all, y'all ain't, y'all. I see some more. Because you know they saying, listen, something looks different. That's the love. That's the that's the spirit of God with it. Something looks different about you. Good God from Zion. That's what Pastor B was saying. Something looks different. 
Man, you you too nervous though. I gave my life to the Lord. What? Are you sure that's what happened to you? Man, you look really like you're glowing because that's the spirit of God on the inside of you. Amen. And what you can't put a listen. You even if you put a lampshade on light, it's still coming through the top, through the top of it. A light is not. We're supposed to be like a city set on a hill. Good God from Zion. We're supposed to. He Jesus is the light of the world. You're not supposed to look dim anymore. Your countenance should change. And the same thing that happened for you. That's all you have to share. And I promise you, it'll be enough to plant a seed. Mm -hmm. I feel, listen, y'all are to, listen, we are called to, uh, to help the Lord bring in this end time harvest. Because just like somebody came for you, Billie Jean, somebody came for you, Michelle, Danielle, Katrina, somebody came you would not be here if someone not, would not have witnessed to you. Amen. Go get somebody else. Amen. Listen, we're going to close on this scripture. Um, Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mark Ooh. chapter 8, verse 34. It says, then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, if any of you wants to be my followers you must give up your own way take up your cross and follow me hallelujah if you try to hang on to your life you will lose it mm -hmm. but if you give up your life for my sake and for my sake of the good news you will save it hallelujah. and he also says and if you and, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? He's asking. And the souls of those who you know. If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, come on here. The Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his father when the holy angel mm -hmm. mm. yeah. so the bible said that if you if you are ashamed of me he said he'll be ashamed of you amen so we encourage you guys on tonight yes lord listen man don't be ashamed there's nothing don't to be ashamed, ashamed of our god. god amen we serve a mighty god amen. and if once you and you, and once you put yourself in remembrance of all the things that God has done for you, mm -hmm. and you constantly remind yourself, if it had not been for the Lord, mm -hmm. where would I be? Mm -hmm. Simple question, but has a powerful meaning and powerful depth to it. Mm -hmm. Because none of us got here on our own. Glory to God. You know, don't let, don't let the world fool you. I died, man. I, I had to do. I had to do. I had to do what I had to do. We didn't. We none of us did nothing on our own. It was by God's grace, mm -hmm. God's permission, and God's keeping power mm -hmm. that we are here. And He said, "It's because of His mercies that we are not consumed." Mm -hmm. Because if truth be told, and it should be, we all should be consumed. But because of the mercies of God. He didn't let the world consume us. It may have rocked our world. It may have shook us. It may have got us all trapped a little bit, but it didn't consume us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So we want to encourage Hallelujah. you guys, man, go out and witness the kingdom of God to individuals that, that, that is within your, your sphere of influence and the people that you come in contact with. Mm -hmm. Share. Mm -hmm. Share the love of God. Share the peace of God. Share your testimony mm -hmm. when God allows you to about what you've been delivered from. Mm -hmm. Minister from a place of compassion and of love because it's the love of God that draws and compels people to come. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Don't let people see people, people so people so confused and people so conditioned and, and been so programmed to think that we serve a tyrant, that he's a God who don't allow you to have no fun. He's a God of rules. You can't do this. Anywhere in this world, you're gonna have rules. <laughs> you go to work, you got rules. They're called commandments. You go to football games, you got rules. Whatever your pleasure is, you got, when you're driving, you got rules. You can't go over, you can't cross over certain lines. You can't even make, people break laws all day long. Yeah, but you can't. They like the process sometimes too. I, that's my point. Anytime you step out of the boundaries of rules, Ooh, you open yourself up for whatever is outside of those boundaries. Yep. So what I'm saying to everybody is, listen, God is not a hard taskmaster, but what he is, is a loving, caring God who requires something from us. And when we when we operate the way he's called us to operate, we can ask him anything. And he'll give it to us. Hallelujah. Oh man, what an awesome, awesome God we serve. Even when we don't deserve it, he loves us enough to man to bring us in. So I encourage you guys, if you do not know Jesus Christ, don't let another minute, another second go by without you receiving. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. With the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance. Listen, Acts 2.28. Repent. That's what it is. Okay. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. for the remission of your sins. Turn. Not a 360, a 180. Turn from it. You do a 360, you end up right back in sin. We don't want you back in sin. We want you to do a 180 and be baptized. Hallelujah. And if you're in this D.C. metro area, you need to be baptized, reach out to us. Amen. We'll gladly get you down in Hallelujah. water. Mm. Hallelujah. And the power of God, we are sure that the power of God is going to overtake you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That you come up, you go down dirty and come up clean. <laughs> Is an outward expression of an inward decision. That's when you be baptized. And so we thank God for you on tonight. Listen, if you need a ministry to partner with, consider the TK and family. We love you because God loves you. Mm -hmm. We'll share the word. Why? Because God loves you enough because he shared it with us to share with you. And mm -hmm. listen, listen, listen. If you are not committed to sowing into a, a king in the ministry, mm -hmm. consider sowing into the kingdom advancing mm -hmm. ministry. Good ground. Don't have to convince you of that. The fruit <laughs> of this ministry speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. The people, the, the partners of this ministry Hallelujah. will speak for itself. And we are committed to doing the work of the Lord. It's a poor farmer who plants his seed in the ground and don't, and, and don't expect the harvest. So when you sow, expect God to move on your seed. Don't do it because you're expecting something great from God. Give because you love God. And I tell everybody, if you sowing into the kingdom of God, don't do it out of obligation. Do it because your heart is committed to sowing and you love God enough to give back what he's given to you. And because of that heart, he will bless you richly. Mm -hmm. I, we promise you by the word of God because he, the Bible tells us that your storehouse, you listen, there will not be room in your storehouse to receive all the blessings that God will have for you. Amen. You have something? And someone, if you need to recommit your life on tonight, whether you come back and watch this or you are on here now and you need to recommit your life to the Lord, um, the Lord wants you to recommit to him while there's time, said the Lord. Amen. And so um, we want to invite you to recommit um, your, your life to the Lord on tonight. Amen. Amen. Seeking why he yet may be found. Amen. So listen, we love you guys. Until the next time, be kingdom advances. Be blessed. See you guys next week.